Hi everybody, I'm Oliver and welcome back to OC Avery. Today we're going to look at caring for our young birds in the mold. We've got four species to look at today. That is green finches, red poles, twice and canaries. We're going to talk about how to care for these individually during the molt as young birds and how we can best provide for them as it is a relatively stressful time and physically taxing time of the year for them. As a rule with green finches, both the young birds and the adult birds, it's recommended you keep them in smaller groups in cages or flights because they are quite prone to night fright. This is when they get scared in the night, they all start flapping, going everywhere, going crazy, and it can cause them to have heart attacks, cause them to have a multitude of problems. And it seems to be the green finches are rather prone to this, being relatively easily scared off the perches, whereas other birds such as canaries might not be as prone to this. Greenfinches are also prone to coccidiosis. This is also known as going light, and this is a parasite which does cause them problems. It makes them go thin, and it, it's not very nice for them. So, because they are rather prone to it, I use Baycox. Now, you need any coccidiosis drug, I just use Baycox. That's what I've had good experiences with, uh, and they seem to get on well with that. I do that at a slightly higher concentration than it's recommended, just because it, they are rather prone to it, so it does clear them out that little bit more. And that's uh, three mil per litre. I do it for four days, once per month. And it seems to keep on top of that, and they don't have many problems going light. And that's, of course, the young birds and the adult birds. Now when you are separating out your young birds make sure you do use baycocks as well a few days prior to make sure that when they do get stressed because they're going to by separating them from the parents when you're weaning them that you've got that because it just takes the edge off it as well. This is not just green finches but any birds it's highly recommended that you get a vitamin supplement so I've got a liquid vitamin supplement here it works rather well we put a couple of mil to that to a litre of water in their drinker and that gets on rather well for them so that is to help replenish their feathers obviously as they molt because there's a higher demand for all these vitamins these minerals and everything there so make sure you do offer a vitamin supplement as well to help them get through the molt the best they can this is not a necessity but the birds do like it especially the green finches is wild food now this is curly dock i just harvested some of this uh, yesterday from a, a local spot now do make sure when you are harvesting any sort of wild feed you make sure you know the place so it isn't pesticided it's not weed killing there's no chemicals on it at all and it is clean so i've made sure that when i've gathered this it's from a particular spot i know is clean so i've put that in there for them and they absolutely love picking at that the wild food is really good for them to both help stimulate different hormones uh, and also to really sort of get them exhibiting some natural behavior as they would do in the wild Finally, as the green finches are one of the better quality birds I have here at OC Avery, and they're one of the better exhibition birds in general, I'm going to take these guys to the shows and I'm going to show them. Therefore, to help them get into that routine, to help them get comfortable with a show cage, I've got my size three British show cage here, and I've got my show cage hook here. Now, all you do is you hang that onto the front of the cage like that, open the door, and carefully hang it on the front just like this. Now, of course, you're going to do that where the door is so the birds can come in as out as they please. And that means that they're getting more comfortable getting on the perches, getting inside the show cage. So when you do come to doing some really sort of advanced show cage training with them, trying to get them more steady, trying to get them to show themselves a bit more, they are a lot more comfortable and you're going to get better results. To encourage the birds to use the show cage correctly, I do put some food on the floor. So it does encourage them to go in there. And I also fill up the water D cup on on the front so that they get used to putting their head through that and drinking in there as well it's useful because then they do get the whole gist of how a show works they know what a show cage is and they're very comfortable in there so it just means that you're going to limit these problems that you may have when you come to really show training them fully after the mold 
The canaries are quite different to the green finches and they don't need as many specialist things. So one of the things that we don't do as much with the canaries is separate them into small groups. I'd rather keep them, a lot of them together because they're all gonna molt together. They're all going to get on rather well together. And they're a very uh, communal sort of bird, a very sociable sort of bird. So I do try and keep a lot of them together in sort of larger groups. Now at the moment, all of the young canaries we've bred this year are actually in a flight just connected to the young bird shed. Now, this is because with loads of canaries losing a lot of feathers, I'm trying to make sure that we've got the airflow in there. And of course, we've got the airflow in here as well. But with it being in a flight, it just gets that little bit more. So it's making sure that the dust is kept down. It's making sure that the air quality is good. So the birds are not going to encounter any breathing problems at all, such as air sight might. Now with the canaries, I don't really offer any uh, sort of wild food. I've just found that they're generally not too interested in it. The odd bird might have a pick at it, but they're not as interested as would be the native birds. So what I do is offer them egg food as well uh, in a bit more, uh, you know, higher quantity than uh, I would with some of the other native birds. And what I also do is give them some conditioning seed. They really appreciate that. That's a little different sort of seed mix than they would normally get from a sort of a basic uh, sort of finch mix. Uh, and they do seem to quite like that a lot. Of course, vitamins, make sure you're giving vitamins and that's across every single young bird. Uh, and something that is rather important and hence why I do put them in a flight. This is especially with the heavier feather breeds like the Norwich canary, is that you need to make sure that they've got that muscle development. So I've got the canaries in a flight, but to make sure that they're constantly keeping fit because these are birds that really are going to be feeders for the next season. And I need to make sure that they're in a good condition like that, especially considering they're not uh, a bird it's going to be showing then uh, I'm just trying to keep them fit throughout the whole year whereas the native birds that I do show it's slightly different of course with the heavier feathered breeds as well they can be a bit more prone to problems with mite mite living on a hell of a lot more feathers uh, on them rather than some of the lighter feathered breeds like a razor canary for example so what I do is get some mite spray and I'll spray that on the birds mist it over them uh, and it just helps keep on top of those problems of course remember when you cleaning out your cages that you've got your birds in make sure you're using mites mite killing sprays you're disinfecting them and you're keeping on top of any mite where possible like that but of course the mite that do live on the birds let's try and reduce that and that's why i use a mite spray red poles and twice are very similar birds in how they behave their diet and sometimes the habitat. So I'm going to keep them together when they're molting and this works rather nicely as they take pretty much everything the exact same as each other. So the first thing is carafil. Red poles in the wild and twice in the wild are going to be bright red. So in captivity, we don't always get those things quite right uh, with exactly how they're going to colour up and get the vibrant colours. So what we're going to offer is carafil red. These are small little crystals that go in the water in rather small amounts. Uh, and you're going to mix that up and it goes really like bright red, almost blood red. Uh, and it's completely safe for them to drink. Now, don't get me wrong, don't go feeding them this all the time, only when they're molting, as it could ruin their liver if they're constantly drinking that sort of thing. But other than that, it's generally okay and they get on all right with it. This means that we can sex our young red poles, especially when they come out of with that bit more red. And when we do pluck the chest feathers, if we need to, when we're trying to sex them, we're going to get that red through a bit more than we would if we had them on it for a very short amount of time. The twice, the males get red rumps, the females don't. So it's another way of giving away exactly what's a male twight and what's a female twight. So they're all getting on rather well with that and it is starting to take effect. Because they are very active species, I do offer a variety of different foods to keep them active and keep them stimulated. So the first thing is the wild food. So once again, they've got some fresh curly dock they've been picking out for about an hour or so now, picking out all the little seeds. They've been really enjoying that, and especially the red poles. They're a very acrobatic bird, often seen high up in the pine trees, doing acrobatic movements on pine cones, retrieving seeds, retrieving insects. So there's loads of seeds they can get from that. Now, when I don't offer curly dock and things like that, they get conditioning seed. So that's again, very similar to what they're going to be getting out of some wild seed. They do very much appreciate that. Of course, I'm only giving this in small amounts, in either an egg food drawer or a finger drawer. And mainly of the interest in the twites with them being rather uh, interested 
in life food is buffalo worms so they're like miniature meal worms i do offer those in small amounts only a pinch maybe or so a day they love messing about with those and eating them it is of course it's good for them a bit of insect protein in their diet as well when moving the twites away from their parents, it's to my understanding they're rather prone to going light, similar to how a greenfinch would be. Uh, so what I'm doing with that is of course using my Baycox supplement, so this is a coccidiosis medication, uh, and I'm using that for a few days before we move them away from the parents and a few days after, just to keep on top of any problems. Red poles generally don't seem to suffer with these, uh, these problems that the twites do. Of course, like I've always said, vitamin supplement for everything that is molten. And then finally, with the twice and the red poles being birds that I'm going to look to exhibit at the shows, show cage hook, show cage, put that on the front of the cage with the door open. Of course, water in there to get them drinking through that head hole, some food in there to encourage them into the cage. Let's get them settled in the show cages so when they do come to doing some more uh, sort of intense showcase training and of course they go to the shows, they're a bit more settled and it's not too unfamiliar for them. As with all birds, but especially molting birds, bats are very important. It helps remove any loose feathers from their bodies, of course, whilst maintaining feather quality in their new feathers that they've just grown. And of course, you're always going to get a better looking bird if you maintain that and make sure they're regularly bathing. So that goes absolutely everything, not just the twites and the red poles. So green finches, twites and red poles, canaries, any other bird you've got, offer bats. Of course, I've got these external ones. They just hang on the front rather easily like that. A little access door makes it very easy to deal with. And of course, just top it up straight through the bars. It's easy to clean the waters. And if you did want to, you can put your mite spray in there uh, and it will help. Just make sure that you check that it is bird safe in case they do drink it. Hygiene is very important, especially with young birds that might have weaker immune systems than some of the older birds. So make sure you keep on top of cleaning so the birds don't encounter any diseases. There's no disease spread if you do have a diseased bird and there's just generally not going to be as many problems if you do so. So I make sure that when I'm cleaning my cages out, I'm putting some mite spray down on the bottom. I'm using some fresh newspaper. I'm spraying the whole cage with this mite spray to keep on top of that and some disinfectant. I'm wiping it down, removing any debris to make sure that the very clean and of course then with everything else making sure that we've got plenty of ventilation so they've always got fresh air coming in they're not going to encounter any breathing problems i'm also making sure to disinfect the floor so when i do come in here of course i'm going to be treading outside and i'm going to be coming in from other bird rooms is that i might possibly have something on my feet and what we don't want especially when there's avian flu problems is bringing something like that into the bird room so i'm always making sure that the floor is very clean so I've got a laminate flooring down in here, so I'm going to constantly be brushing it up and then when I need to, disinfecting it, brushing it round, mopping it all up and it's nice, clean and fresh. And that means that everything in here is going to be as safe as possible. The birds are going to be in the best of health and we're going to get the best results out of them. So if you have enjoyed today's video and found some useful tips, please smash a like on it. Let's aim for 200 likes on this video. And if you have enjoyed this episode and you would like to see more from OC Avery, hit the subscribe down below. Remember, we're trying to hit 10,000 subs before the end of the year. So please help me get there subscribe please thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one